Why did I want to declutter my home? Before I decluttered my home, I was cleaning my kitchen constantly and I was never able to catch up. While one room was fixed, the other two needed my attention. I was under a constant putting out fire mode. I wanted to clean less and spend more time with my kids who were little at the time, more creative time for myself like painting. I also had to learn new skills to cook gluten-free and that was a big curveball to the already hectic timeline of my day. I wanted to have less stress and have a household that didn't fall apart from any sudden extra task. I was overwhelmed and irritated jumping from task to task. Decluttering is hard and time consuming. The emotional attachment to things is real. Today my home is very easily maintained. It doesn't mean we don't have things out here and there, but it can be tidy up very fast. So what helped me to find the amount of things that allowed me to do my hobbies, have more time, reduce the stress and have a functioning household? Here are 15 tips how I simplified my home. If I lost it, would I buy it again? If I lost this item, would I buy exactly the same? This is usually a good deal breaker when I can't decide on an item and it's lingering around it puts a recognition on the true value of the item organizing is not minimizing just because things are neatly hidden in attractive boxes but i forget what i have or i have a hard time to find it that's a clear sign it is too much and i reached my mental limit it is different from when you locate things easily. It is the forgetting part that needs to be recognized. It is forgotten because it is out of sight. Is it applies to my today self? Saying goodbye to my old self. Time changes and things can be very important at times in my life. So when I see this item, my brain recognizes it as an important item. But I don't use it anymore. I noticed that something was very important once. I got stuck with the mentality towards this item. It was important to recognize if my interest has changed not to hold on to those materials that no longer were serving their purpose. If it was in the get rid of pile a few times already, it was there for a reason. Have you came across with some items that you put into the get rid of pile but they made their way back before the drop off? I have. <laughs> I have shuffled some items but if there is a consideration for a few times already, it's just a procrastinated decision. It's okay to adapt. In the kitchen, I have a few unconventional simplifying. I have a small oven for baking and I don't own a microwave. 
I have a few tools that helps me to create food, but overall, a big ball, a sharp knife, and one big size of cutting board will support my main tasks. There are things that I want and what I need. This applies mostly for the future, what I bring in as I shop, it's a trap. If I don't say no at the store, I have to go through the declutter decision later on. But by the time, I will have the emotional attachment and the guilt of spending money on it. Recognizing the similar items that I decluttered in the past is a good guide. I love to cook and bake, but I needed to simplify things so I don't go crazy <laughs> with the amount of things in the pantry. It can go out of the control once in a while, but I can just go back and declutter a little bit and use up the ingredients. But basically what was the biggest hub for me as I decluttered my pantry and I was setting up a simplified pantry is to create recipes that are mostly requiring the same or same ingredients as. And that doesn't mean I have the same food always. It's just that dry pantry that I try to have limit so the recipes that I'm playing around with I can create different taste and texture but uh, the the type of flowers that I have is reduced to just a couple of them uh, and as a gluten-free and then only the fresh ingredients that I'm changing up a lot There are limits to the capacity of our brain, energy and time. It is important to recognize this. It's very individual. What is that an individual can handle, but no matter where I am on that scale, I have a limit and I have to recognize that line. It's just the accepting part, not to go into denial and draw the boundary with the things. Brain set for the minimizing. Minimizing is difficult but not impossible. Lots of people say, oh, I'm not good at decluttering, I'm not good at organizing, but that mindset will determine the attitude towards any improvement because by saying I'm not good at getting rid of things, it lets the brain know it's already decided that I don't want to do it.
while I had some genetic plans what I'm going to do after I decluttered my home that's when I really started to get into more of the arts and I started to paint and creating all sorts of cute things and I started to do the scan fair after the scan fair I started to do this YouTube channel and the two it's kind of merging together <laughs> Thank you so much guys, I really really appreciate that because that would not be possible without you so I'm very very thankful to you for that but these two of my favorite things and also the cooking they can be all in this whole YouTube world and that makes me really really happy and that's basically the result of my decluttering journey While I'm packing the orders, which I'm very thankful for you guys, I will share more of the tips what helped me to declutter my home. Stop finding a place so just the item can be kept. As soon as I had the question if I needed this item, my brain sprung into action to get creative to find 10 other users in a different room. If I need to find a function for that item, probably it's not needed. not getting fixated on how much it was cost. It is like meeting with many different people in our life. Hard to predict who stays in and who we will outgrow. Regardless, they each will teach us something. Same with items, there will be amazing deals that will be used beyond the expected lifespan and there will be items that were more costly and not useful as expected they say you have to sell an item for what are the people willing to pay for that it's not how much is asked for things worth as much you can sell it for that's usually way less than we think of the items we bought and paid the full price for When I declutter something, I think of the time I gain and space. I had a pile I called the I wanna get rid of pile. Comparing the items were able to help me, which was more important to me, which one was less important. Every time I've got stuck, I said to myself, this is the item that is holding me back to have extra time. This is the item that holds me back from painting suddenly the worth of the item started to shrink and the reward of my goal was closer by letting the item go
clutter holds negative feelings. Everything in our home that we see triggers an emotion, while things that we love and use generates a lovely surrounding. Whatever is surrounding us, this is what we will become. Think about the saying, show me your five closest friends and I'll tell your future. Same goes to the home where we spend so much time. If we see clutter, we see procrastination. When we see dusty items, we see neglect. When we see unused items and take up space, we feel frustration. Exam carefully how your home makes you feel. Decluttering in layers. When I was decluttering areas in my home, I decluttered the low hanging fruit first. When it was done, I had a better understanding of what I really use from that area. So I was able to reduce more. For the next round, it was less overwhelming to decide what else can be eliminated from there. The breaks between the decluttering also made it more manageable to get it done. Science, um, I had less at this point. I started to get more creative with the use of things. So I was able to reduce even more by repurposing the items. The result was a very airy storage where I can grab things with one move. And since it had an easy access, I was more likely to put it back and keep it organized. There's only one thing left to do.